Hi everybody. Hello, good afternoon. It's currently Tuesday afternoon and I am popping on to show you a cute project today. Um, if you haven't been on my Facebook group yet, make sure you go over there and join by the way. Um, I announced yesterday that my project of the week, not project, product of the week is the Falling for Leaves bundle. Have you seen it? It's really a good one. It's very, very pretty. And so today I thought I would hop on here and do a bonus project like I did last week. I enjoyed doing um, that bonus project, so I'm gonna try to do that every week over here on my business page. Hi, Denise, good, I'm glad I'm not talking to myself. Hi, guys. Okay, so while we wait for everybody to join, I'm just gonna take a couple of minutes and let you know about the celebrating World Card Making Day. Have you guys seen the big list? Stampin' Up! is celebrating World Card Making Day, which I believe is Saturday. Um, they're turning it into a whole week, so it's World Card Making Week, basically. And they have um, put a whole bunch of stuff on sale, 10% off. So I grabbed a couple of things just to show you my favorites. Um, if you go over to the Stampin' Up! page and you are on the store, you'll see it's there's a big icon, click on it, and then you can see everything that's on sale. It's a little bit easier than reading from the list. Um, I have to say that my favorite thing, well, no, I have to start with this. My favorite thing on the list are Stampin' Dimensionals. You guys know me, I use a ton of these, a ton. I order these usually 20 packages at a time. I have a little bit of a problem, but I know a lot of you are like that too. Let me know how many of you out there use a ton of these. I can see some of you who are watching. I know you and I know you use dimensionals, but I'm not gonna mention any names. Anyways, these are normally $4 and right now they're $3.50. So it's a great time to stock up on those. And the tear and tape is on sale also. Tear and tape is our really, really good permanent adhesive. If you're like me and you don't like liquid adhesive, this is your go-to. Um, and it just tears off, which is really good too. I'm gonna use that today on today's project. So those are both on sale. Very important card making, um, <laughs> very important card making um, requirement. And I'm seeing Denise, my friend Denise is calling out our friend Anne Marie, and that's who I knew was watching. And Anne Marie loves dimensionals as much as I do. Um, another thing on that list is this adorable stamp set, PS You're the Best. I, I have only used this um, once or twice since I got it, but I love it. And I just happened to get a card in the mail for my birthday last week from my downline crystal. Look how adorable this is. I showed you guys this on Facebook Live on Friday, but it's so cute and I thought it was so timely that that stamp set is on sale too. So if you've been thinking about getting it, now's the time. Another great thing on the stamps, I mean on the sale is this stamp set. It's a double stamp set. Um, Petal Palette it came out last spring <laughs> and um, I am laughing at y'all's comments about the uh, dimensionals. Yes, I know, we love the dimensionals. Hi, Amy. Um, this is a great one and it is higher end priced stamp set. So if you haven't gotten it yet because of that, now's a great time because it's 10%. And then um, two of the best kits we've ever had are on there. Um, the Soft Sains kit and it probably would be better for me to show you this when I turn the camera, but I have actually completed this kit and the cards are gorgeous. I think this is the Soft Sains. I get them all mixed up. Um, but this one I know is on there and it comes with the stamps. Hello, that's always an awesome deal. And I believe it has the, um, the ink in here too. Oh, and look what else it has. These were hiding. I need to pull these out so I can use them. A stack of dimensionals. All right, and then there's one other kit I just wanted to point out, and it's the Lots of Happy. And I have not made all of these, but the ones that I have made are so beautiful. Black and white and pink has my name written all over it, I think. So anyways, if you love kits, maybe you have a retreat coming up or you have a road trip. Kits are great on a road trip. Um, check them out, check out the World Card Making day sale and um, check out those those kits they're really great okay so I'm gonna flip the camera today I'm gonna show you how to make this cute little guy he features the falling for leaves 
um, stamp set and framelits, and I really feel strongly about these framelits. Um, the stamp set is beautiful, but the framelits aren't just a support system for the stamps. They are beautiful in their in their own right and can be used um, by themselves or with the stamp. So um, we're going to use that. If you haven't joined me for Facebook Live before, you know that I don't have a smooth system to flip my camera around, so I'm just going to cover you up for a second, and I'm going to flip you over to my other camera holder. Um, this is how it works best for me. I know there's probably better ways to do it, but I have found in my two years of Facebook Live that I just have to flip it around. Now I'm going to move this other one out and get my paper adjusted. All right, and I wanna make sure I can see your comments too. Here's this, while I'm getting all situated, you can look at it. Now, on Facebook Live on Fridays, I always have a PDF with all the products and measurements and all of that, but midweek when I jump in as a surprise, I'm not gonna have that, it's just kind of a bonus, extra fun project. So I've written here on my grid paper, in case you wanna make this, what you're gonna need. You're gonna need a four by four piece of Mango Melody cardstock, and two um, soft suede two by five. So we'll get to that in a second. Now here's the bundle and I love it. I have been using it a ton. In fact, I bought two sets of these framelits because I have been mass producing, making lots of projects with them. Um, sometimes I make 30, 40, 50 of the same card. And so it helps me to have more than one framelit. And this is one of those that I have used a ton. Um, so I actually have two sets and it has this beautiful edge and this little line. Now, Denise, are you still here? Remember at our team meeting when I found that, that framelit and this is what it goes to and Denise was so sweet. I had a random framelit mixed in with my projects and I couldn't remember what it was from. So she messaged me and she said, it goes to your falling for leaves framelit set. Well, guess what, Denise? I can't find it now. <laughs> <laughs> so that framelit that goes right there, it's a really cool edge. I can't find it. It's here somewhere, and we'll probably find it when I get out everything else for our team meeting again in October. Uh, my team comes over once a month, and we make projects. I know, Denise. I know. It'll, we'll find it. I know. The good news is I have two sets of these, so I do have one of them. Um, so anyway, here is the stamps and framelits, and I also have a class available right now. Um centered around this set, this bundle, and it's three super fancy cards and three 3D projects, kind of a mix, so it's six projects. If you love this, this bundle and you don't have it yet, you might wanna check out my class because with the bundle, I'm also gonna send you the make and takes and I'm gonna send you this package of Nature's Poem Twine for free when you buy the option that has the bundle. There's also a PDF available and some other options. So you can go over to my blog and find that information and I'll link it here when I'm done. Um, what paper I'm using again, Tracy, that right there, that's what you need, right? Four by four Mango Melody. And oh, I wanted to say that the deadline for that class I just showed you is October 16th, all right? So it'll, it'll be here before we know it. All right, well, let's make this cute project. I played around, of course, I have my projects for Friday already designed, and they are super cute. I had no problem designing projects this week with this bundle. Um, and so then I came up with a fourth project to show you guys, and I had bought a box of pumpkin spice K-cups. I'm not a coffee drinker, but I bought them for two reasons. One, they were on sale. And two, we're going to use these in a project um, at our team meeting next week. So I went ahead and got them. So um, I'm using that. You can, of course, use any K-cup you want, but it fits, fits perfectly in this little box. All right, well, let's get started. Now, the other stamp that I'm using, you probably noticed, is the background stamp, the uh, Buffalo Check background stamp. And I think if you've watched my Facebook lives before, you know it now lives on my Stamparatus. <laughs> it has not left the plate. Luckily now we have Stamparatus accessories and I can order extra plates. So I truly can leave this guy here. I have used it weekly, if not daily, lately. It's so cute. All right, so I'm using the Buffalo background check and I'm also using, look, they came out with new 
grid paper that fits right into our, see how my Stamparatus is dirty? Now that'll all wipe off, but if that bothers you, look, you can get grid paper that is the perfect size right there for your Stamparatus. All right, now that Mango Melody piece I told you, let's look at it again. It needs to be four by four. But I'm gonna start out with just a bigger sheet of cardstock that makes it a little bit easier. Oh no, my magnets are over here. Um, your magnet store on the bottom, unless you're me and you have them on your, <laughs> your dry erase board for some reason. I'm gonna stamp it a little bit bigger on a big, a uh, little bit bigger piece of cardstock so that I can use that, that magnet. And I've put it up here kind of in the corner too. So even if I didn't use my magnet and I wanted to restamp it, I know that I could just slide it right there into the corner. So this is Mango Melody and I'm actually gonna stamp it with soft suede. I'm distracted by Diane's comment. That's so sweet, Diane. Thank you. She shared to four friends. I love your card so much. Well, thanks. That, that makes me very happy. You know, sometimes when you're creating in your studio and you're by yourself, you're not with your friends, you just don't know. So it's nice to hear that. Thank you so much. All right. Soft suede all over the Buffalo check. And look, I need to move it over, don't I? It's not gonna fit in the corner. So, good thing I have my magnet. Let's do this, make sure that I have it in the right spot. All right, now we definitely need the magnet. All right, firm pressure all around. And I'm finding that the Buffalo Check stamp, it stamps really well if your ink pad is juicy. If your ink pad is not juicy, you're gonna need to um, stamp it a couple of times. But I've also found that if I'm stamping on colored cardstock, I also need to stamp it a couple of times. And because the Stamparatus, it's in exact right spot and it'll stamp well. I was at an event a couple of weeks ago where we didn't have the Stamparatus and we were trying to, I'm gonna just do that one more time so it's really dark. But that right there needs to be inked a little bit better. Um, we were all trying to stamp the Buffalo check without the Stamparatus, and I thought, whoa, this is way easier with that Stamparatus. There we go, beautiful. All right, let's move that out, and I will clean that off in a little while. Now we're gonna need to cut this down to four by four. So, I got my big chopper today. I'm gonna cut this down to four by four and I'm gonna tell you that this little piece right here I actually saved from the other project because that's enough for something right a banner or something to go across my card yes thanks guys I know Rhonda I am obsessed with Buffalo check I had so many people send me sweet cards and little treats for my birthday and they all knew they all sent me Buffalo check stuff I thought that was so funny all right so on my simply scored I'm gonna score it at one inch on all four sides. So that's pretty easy to remember. Four by four and one inch on all four sides. All right, now I'm going to, Tracy, I'm reading your comment. No, there's no In Color Clubs. No, we have to sign up when the new catalog comes out for In Color Club. Unfortunately, that if you don't get in on the first month, that's it. Um, but don't worry, I do it every year, so make sure you check back in, uh, in um, next year around May. All right, so now I'm going to cut these fold lines on two sides. It's actually easier to see if I turn it over like that. So there. And, well, come on. There. Now I'm gonna cut the corners off, okay? This is gonna help me get my edges lined up. So I'm just gonna go around and cut off each tab diagonally, each of the four corners. All right, now I'm gonna use my Fast Fuse that is on the clearance rack. And if you don't have fast fuse, you can use your Tombow liquid or your tear and tape. Now I'm folding these in. I just put adhesive on each little triangle, folding them in. And now we just have a little box. See, and look, perfect. 
Now we're gonna get those two sides, those two pieces of soft suede that I have right here, two by five, and you need two of them. And I'm gonna punch them with the scalloped tag topper punch. Look at that, tags instantly. All right, and now we're gonna actually adhere these on the inside like that. And this is where I'm gonna use my tear and tape. Tear and tape is similar to what we used to use, the red tape. Um, but if you used red tape, you know that you could not just tear it off like that. You actually had to get your scissors, cut it, and then the little, the little red part that peeled off was like static cling. It stuck to everything. You'd have them sticking to your your elbow, you'd have them sticking to the side of your project. So tear and tape is a lot better, it doesn't do that. And it's on sale. All right, so I'm gonna take this, I put that adhesive down there and I'm just gonna slide it on the inside. And this one's gonna go on the opposite side, right on the inside as well. All right, so can you see how that is? This is really easy. Now put that in there and I'm gonna take the lace trim, very vanilla lace trim. I debated on what to use here. I um, was gonna use my linen, braided linen trim, which I am in love with, but I thought, no, let's change it. Let's mix it up a little bit. I was hoping that to go for kind of a masculine project, but I think once I put the lace on here, I kind of killed that idea. But if you wanted to go with a masculine idea, masculine project, maybe you're making this for your husband or your boss or somebody who's a dude instead of a girl, you could use your braided linen trim and I think that would give you a more masculine look or even our burlap ribbon. All right, so straighten that out, it's tied together. And you know, to get that out, they don't really have to untie it. So, uh, you know, you can just leave it. Once you get it, it's perfect. All right, so there we go, super cute. However, we've got to use that beautiful leaf stamp. And I'm gonna use, let me show you which one, this one right here. This is really the only leaf in here that's um, intricate to color. Um, these other ones you can just stamp um, and color in quickly with one color or stamp them on colored cardstock. But this one, I really enjoy coloring it. And I have found that the little, little segments in there are so tiny that if I emboss it, I do a better job of coloring. It kind of contains my color. Um, I'm going to use Mango Melody cardstock and I am using an embossing buddy. And an embossing buddy is just a little powder, a little bag full of powder, and it's going to help keep those little bits of embossing powder where they need to be. It's going to release kind of any static that's there and it's going to keep um, those little tiny bits from sticking. Now I'm just using Versamark, which is like a clear ink that you use to emboss. And then I am going to use clear embossing powder that I have in this little container that I got at TJ Maxx. I know somebody's gonna ask. It's just a, like a food container, but I use this so much that I like to just have it so I don't have to use anything else. And then I can just tap, 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 and I've got it all off of there. You guys see how it's kind of powdery? Now we're gonna turn on the heat tool. And it takes a, the heat tool just a, about, I don't know, 30 seconds to kind of get to the temperature where it starts to turn this. So if I can get untangled over here, I'm gonna kind of pull it up. Hopefully you guys will be able to see it. When your embossing powder hits the right temperature, it's going to turn slick. See, there we go. Can you guys see that? It's turning shiny and slick. It's very magical, and it's very exciting when you do it for the first time. I've told the story many times of how I was really cheap. I, of course, I was really poor, too. I was like 20 years old, college student, and I wanted to emboss. But I didn't want to buy a heat tool, so I tried to use my hair dryer, and it did not work. So I always think about that when I emboss. Gotta have the heat tool. It gets much hotter than a hair dryer. All right, so I think we're good. You guys see how nice and shiny that is? Now I'm going to, I've done this several ways. Let me show you this one on this project in my class. I use blends and I use different um, 
mostly pumpkin pie with some Cajun craze in there, but I did all kinds of shading and stuff on there. But this one I'm just gonna kind of keep simple. And I thought because I might, this might be a project that you kind of mass produce. You might make 10 of these for the office, or if you're, if you're a craft fair person, you wanna make 10 for a craft fair. You don't wanna spend two hours coloring that in, but we wanna give it a little bit of dimension. So I'm gonna take my light mango melody blend and you know look these are so hard these two they look very close so i have to i definitely have to look okay light and i'm just gonna go inside those little lines and i'm gonna do about every other segment here um this you know you could spend 20 minutes coloring this guy in if you if you really wanted to get crazy and go you know different colors and shading but i wanted to keep this project really simple so that it's easy to recreate and to mass produce. Do you guys mass produce? Do you make, you know, 10, 15, 20 of something? I know I do. I feel like I'm always mass producing. If it's not for projects, for customers, or for a team, um, or for um, clubs, then I am making teacher gifts or things for craft sales. So I like to keep it simple. So you can see I did that with the light Mango Melody. Now I'm just gonna take my Wink of Stella. And it's interesting that the Wink of Stella kind of turns the cardstock almost the same color there as that Mango Melody marker. But once it dries, you can tell the difference. Plus, the Wink of Stella is shimmery. It's glittery. Mm, let's do the little stem too. It's a great way to use glitter without getting all glittery. You're not gonna get glitter on you and your cat and your floor with the, the Wink of Stella. It's going to just stay right there. It's just a little brush and it dries clear. I'm gonna add a little bit there. Okay, I think that's good. Now, not only is it shiny from the embossing, but it's a little bit shimmery also from the Wink of Stella. All right, so let's bring the big shot over. This framelit set, in the beginning, when I first started using it, I thought that you had to use these two together. It was the very first time I used it. I thought you had to cut the inside and the outside. But no, this cuts a um, leaf out by itself, and this cuts a leaf out by itself. And so this is the one that goes around this. And then let me show you also this. This is the two together. So I cut one from pumpkin pie and one from Mango Melody and you just put them together. Aren't they beautiful? So that is fun. That's a really fun, um, you know, aspect of these framelits. Okay, let's see if we can get this, this guy lined up. We're almost done. Now, if you guys are watching live, you're watching here on my Facebook business page. Um, I have a group page also that is open to anybody and it's pretty much the same thing as my business page except I post more over there and the reason that is is because my business page the way Facebook has um, their analytics set up you don't get to see but maybe 10% of what people post on a business page and it's because you know Facebook knows that you don't want your your um, news feed filled with advertisements right so they're treating us when we have a business page, kind of as the same way they treat Target or Walmart Facebook pages. So for those of you that really like to stamp and who want to see projects and tutorials and announcements, make sure you jump over to my group page and join that page. I'm putting these on with dimensionals, by the way. Um, and you will get a notification in your little notifications list every time I post. And so you won't miss anything important. Like, um, I think it was Tracy saying a minute ago she missed out on um, the In Color Club. Well, if you join my group and you are a frequent Facebook user, you, will, you won't miss out on anything because I post everything over there. All right, now I didn't write this measurement down. This is three-fourths by four and three-fourths, okay? Three-fourths by four and three-fourths. And I just stamped that in soft suede. And I'm gonna use, this is the Taylor Tag Punch. And it's a good one to use to make your little banners. 
Mike that. Ooh, and I need to, I have to grab my bone folder today because we're gonna curve this paper. I'm gonna take my bone folder and just kind of curl this paper like you would do for ribbon on a birthday gift. See how that does like that? And I want these ends especially to stick out like that. So it kind of creates a, a more of a banner feel. So anyways, my Facebook group, if you guys wanna join that, as soon as I'm done here, I'm gonna post the link to my Facebook group over, or up here at the top of, the, of this video. So you can find it, click over there, click join. Everybody is welcome, even if you're a demonstrator. I know, I am in groups with other demonstrators, it's okay. I do my Facebook Lives on Fridays, typically, at two o'clock central, and I do three projects on Fridays. There we go, isn't it so cute? I'm done and I'm still talking. So cute and so simple. I thought about adding lots of layers, but I thought, nope, we're gonna keep this one simple because then it's easy to recreate and to hand out as gifts. On, on Friday, this Friday, two o'clock, over on my group, I'll have three more projects featuring this adorable um, fr uh, Falling for Leaves bundle. So that way you can um, take part in that live. I have lots of prizes and giveaways and a PDF with all the measurements and all the product information. And that's on Fridays. All right, you guys, thanks so much for joining me. Don't forget to take advantage of the sale that's going on. And don't forget to check out my Falling for Leaves class, which is on my blog at pinkbuckaroo.com. And don't forget to join me on Friday for three more projects using Falling for Leaves. All right, you guys, have a great afternoon. Thanks so much for joining me. And please feel free to message me if you have any questions. Bye-bye.